Having jars of home canned chicken on the shelf is wonderful because you don't have to remember to thaw things out. You're not dependent upon the freezer, so if the power goes out, there's no worry that your food is gonna go bad and you don't have to worry about having a generator in order to keep it going. But one of my favorite reasons for having home canned meat on the shelf is because it makes incredibly fast and easy meals and there is nothing like having a convenience meal when it's completely home cooked and home grown if you're raising your own chicken at your fingertips to serve at a moment's notice and it tastes phenomenally good if you've ever had canned chicken in the metal cans sometimes can have kind of a metallic or metally flavor you don't ever get that when you have canned chicken in glass canning jars. So we are going to prep up. You see, I've already started prepping my chicken to get this canned. We actually are out of freezer space. Normally we raise all of our own chickens, but I was looking and we're not going to be raising our meat birds until this coming summer. And I only have like five whole chickens left and I was not willing to go without chicken meat for so many months out of the year. So I ordered some of the organic chicken breasts from Azure Standard. Azure is a sponsor of this video and we'll have a coupon code below. You can go and check that out. And when I had placed my order for it, I was kind of planning ahead and I got a big box of it. And then we ended up being blessed with getting some elk from one of our neighbors who got an elk, had his elk tag, and had more than they could use. So they gave us some of the elk, which meant my freezer is packed full. I have absolutely no room. So when this came in, I knew that that meant I needed to get this chicken canned up and on the shelf which is actually a good thing because I am out of canned chicken on our shelf and really could have used it this past week when we had some illnesses in the family and cooking was not high on the priority list. So you definitely wanna make sure that your chicken is all the way thawed if it has been frozen before canning. And if it is fresh chicken, meaning you have just harvested it, you can can it, but you do wanna make sure that it chills for approximately six hours and rests before you can it. So we are going to cut these first in approximately one inch strips. So I'm gonna just go like that. And then I'm just gonna cut these into chunks about oh, an inch to two inches thick. And we, when we're doing raw packed chicken, which is what I am doing today, you are just going to put these into your freshly washed clean jars, but there is no cooking of this prior. And we are going to put this in our jars to approximately one and a quarter inch headspace. So these are a generous, generous headspace here. So this is a one inch, if I go all the way from here down to here, and then this would be another quarter. So we're gonna check and see where we're at here. We are at one and pretty much a quarter on here, so this is good to go. So you can see there's quite a bit of space left from here to the rim of the jar. And we're gonna go ahead and keep getting these cut up and our jars filled. Now there's some cuts of meat that you cannot raw pack. So any type of ground meat needs to be a hot pack. And the reason for that is because ground meat, as it cooks, because this will become fully cooked after once it goes through the canning process, it will come out of these jars from the canner and it'll be fully cooked. But with the ground meat, when it does that, it'll go together in one huge lump in the center of the jar, which you don't want. One, because you want the ground meat to not be like a meatloaf inside the jar, but two, it becomes a safety issue with density. Now, that is not the case with this type when you're doing chunked meat and it's not ground, you're completely fine. And you can pressure can, you do have to use a pressure can, you cannot water bath can meat. It is a non-acidic food, and so it needs to be done in a pressure canner. But you can pressure can up all different, you can do chicken, you can do poultry, you can do beef, you can do venison, and you can do a hot pack. If you wanna hot pack your chicken, which is where you would cook it to about two thirds of the way done, and then you would cover it with boiling broth or water. But I have to be honest, I am looking at efficiency <laughs> And time-wise, and it is much faster for me to just dice up this chicken, put it in the jars, and then can it. You also can can chicken with the bone in. 
you just will adjust your processing times. Now, if you've got these like little little strips here of the chicken, you see it's kind of like a little bit of memory and a little bit of fat, you can go ahead and trim that off. Chicken breasts don't have a lot of fat on them anyways, so we're not really worried about excess amounts of fat. So when you're doing a raw pack, you do not want to have the water inside your pressure canner heated like you would for a hot pack. We wanna make sure that the temperature of the water and the temperature of the jar are fairly close together so that you don't have heat shock or temperature shock, it could be cold versus hot, and crack your jars. So we just turned our canner on low just to bring that water up to room temperature, which is the same temperature of our glass jars. Now, you can add salt when you're canning your chicken, which I highly recommend because this chicken will be cooking during the canning process. I like to do a half a teaspoon of salt per pint jar. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add that on the top. And of course, if you're doing quart jars, then you would simply double that because a quart is two pints. You will find that you get with the boneless chicken, you're gonna get approximately a pound of chicken per pint jar. Again, that would be doubled for quarts, so figure about two pounds of chicken per quart jar. Of course, if it's bone in, it's gonna be a little bit different. So now that we've got these ready to go, we are going to wipe all of our rims down before we put our lids on. Whenever you're canning meat or anything with fat in it, which is usually just meat, Chicken is not as fatty, of course, as beef, but it's recommended to use a rag that has been moistened with vinegar so that there is any fat on the rims of the jar. The vinegar will cut through that so that you don't inhibit any of the sealing. This is also a good time to just run your finger around the tops of your jars if you didn't inspect them when you pulled them and washed them and make sure that there are no nicks on there that would affect the ability to seal. So now we are going to get our lids on these and you wanna make sure that you wash your lids with hot soapy water. And we're just gonna center those down on all of our jars. And I have got some coupon codes for you for ordering your canning lids. Um, I like to order my canning lids in bulk so you can get a hundred lids. These are the wide mouth, of course, in boxes like this from four jars. I've got a coupon code for you. We'll put that beneath the video so that you can check that out. And then we are going to tighten, put our bands on and tighten these down to fingertip tight, which means just until you meet resistance and then a quarter turn more. So now we're gonna load these into our canner and because they are raw pack, I don't have to worry about using a oven mitt or anything to protect my hands because the jars are not hot. You do wanna make sure that as you were getting your canning water brought up to room temperature, when you're canning meat, it goes for longer than vegetables. So you do wanna ensure, I have two to three inches of water in the bottom of your canner, and as you add your jars, it's going to raise that canning level. Now typically when it comes to pressure canning, it's not like water bath canning where you have the level of water completely over your jars. Now you always wanna make sure that you've got your rack in the bottom of the canner so your jars are never sitting directly on the heat source. But the great thing about using this larger canner right here is I can double stack. So I've got my second rack here to go ahead and get the rest of my jars in. Now when I'm doing canned chicken like this, I like to use the wide mouth simply because they are easier to pack the meat in than the narrow mouth and then also easier to get the meat out when it comes to time of use. But if you are using the wide mouth, it does mean that you have less jars can go in the canner versus using regular mouth. So now that we have got all of our jars in the canner, it is time to get this baby sealed up and then we will turn up our heat. So whenever you're tightening down your wing nuts, you always wanna do opposing so that they're on each side so that the lid goes down evenly and then tighten them together in tandem. 
So now we're gonna go ahead and turn up our heat to medium high to get this up to pressure. Now, how many pounds of pressure do you need to use? If you are using a weighted gauge, which is what this is, you are going to be at 10 pounds of pressure if you are 1,000 feet above sea level or lower. If you are 1,001 feet above sea level, then you need to operate on 15 pounds of pressure. I am, we're between like five and 600 feet above sea level, so I'm at the 10 pounds of pressure. Now, if you're using a geared gauge or a dial gauge, then you are going to go to 11 PSI. Same thing with the altitude. If you are 1,001 feet above sea level, then you are going to increase your PSI. So you always wanna make sure that you let your pressure canner exhaust for 10 minutes before you ever put your weight on. And that means that you have a steady stream of steam, say that three times fast, coming out the vent pipe. So you wanna let that go for 10 minutes. We are on the countdown. And the reason you wanna do that is because that helps to properly exhaust your pressure canner. And if you skip this step, you actually can have a inaccurate pounds of pressure while it's processing. So this is a pretty important step, don't skip that. So after it is exhausted for 10 minutes, this is all really hot, that's hot steam coming out and the entire canner does get hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my oven mitt and for my altitude, I am at 10 pounds of pressure. So we're gonna go ahead and put our weight over our vent pipe, but we are not going to start our processing time until we have built up to the full 10 pounds of pressure. Now, if you are wanting to learn more about home food preservation, we are using the tutorial on poultry and chicken from my book, Everything Worth Preserving. Not only does it include tutorials for canning, pressure canning meat and recipes for meat, but it's all nine forms of home food preservation into one almost 400 page manual here. So we'll leave a link beneath that. You can go and check this out. And then as soon as we're at pounds of pressure, I can hear it's almost getting ready to start jiggling. We'll start our timer. So once your pressure canner has started to jiggle and hiss, and we can also see my dial gauge, I am at 11 PSI, then we are going to start our timer. So because we're doing pints that are boneless, we are gonna be pressure canning these for 75 minutes which is one hour and 15 minutes. So after you have let your pressure canner completely naturally come down and depressurize, then we let these sit for another 10 minutes with the lid off. And as you can see, these are the liquid inside. This is still boiling. So this has been over 10 minutes with this sitting with the lid off. And this is completely normal. It's very normal for the liquid to still be boiling, but you can also see how much liquid, we didn't put any liquid in here. And this is a question that I get asked a lot, like with raw meat, you don't add any liquid. And I don't because if you had added liquid in here and look at how much this is released of liquid, if I had added liquid in here and then can it, there would have been so much liquid that you would have had too much liquid per jar. So raw canning meat, I do not add any additional liquid because it creates its own broth and liquid during the canning process. And whenever you're taking these jars out, you wanna absolutely make sure that you are putting these on a towel that has been at least doubled over. You never wanna put a jar with still boiling liquid in it on a cold or even room temperature countertop. You always wanna make sure that you've got that on a towel. And remember that, that complete outside the whole canner is gonna be really hot. So you wanna make sure that you are not brushing up against that with your bare skin. So these jars will sit here on this towel for 24 hours. After 24 hours, we will remove the bands and we'll check the seals, make sure they have all sealed. And then we'll go ahead and put them on the pantry shelf. So we have 11 pints here of home canned chicken and these are phenomenal for making a quick chicken salad. I love having these on hand to make chicken pot pie. And sometimes I will just simply grab a jar off the shelf and make a quick gravy and we will just have like hot open face chicken and gravy sandwiches. Super versatile and wonderful throwing together. Oftentimes I'll just grab jars of different vegetables 
different chicken and we'll just make like a quick soup or chicken noodle. Really handy to have on hand. I know exactly what is in these and more importantly, what's not.